We're back. This is the last time you see the process, so I'm just gonna do it real quick. Um, I'm gonna paint this time going out and away from the center. And then I'm gonna peel the paint off so you can see the final effect that I have. Take your time. Although you're seeing a very condensed version of what I'm doing here, you should be taking your time, taking as long as you need to make this look good. Don't rush anything. Practically done. Also, wear an apron. It's not a requirement, but it is your clothes. There have been way too many nice pieces of clothes lost to art. Um, make sure you're not that person. Anyways, uh, I'm going to dry this one last time and then paint it. It's a requirement that you guys know what color combinations you're going to do. Don't just use mine because it's the easiest. Pick one that's going to make sense for your painting. Pick, pick one that's going to make your painting look great. Um, there are a lot of steps to this project. Ooh. Here's an opportunity for me to show you what I just said about getting paint where it doesn't belong. Scrub a little bit. It's better than having to be painted here. And there you go. So that's good enough. We got a little careless. Don't get careless. Be patient. If you're getting frustrated, take a break. Not permanently, but take a break for the day. Or at least for a moment in the day. And there we have it. We're done painting each one of my rays of light. Now it's time for the big reveal. Here we go. One. Here's another. Looks pretty good. Here's that. I'm also going to reveal this side so you see that edge effect that I was talking about. Like that. This. And that's going to carry on all the way around. I just can't show you the rest of it because I need it right over here, right by Chong. Cheech's Chich face. Ah. Alright, so check that out. That's looking fantastic, right? Alright, time for the next step. Alright, so check this out. So it might be hard to see from where we're at here. But... So what I'm pointing at is I've labeled this A, B, C all the way to H. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units, right? I'm gonna write that down right here. With a big old number eight. And then I've already numbered the top up to 14, so I'm gonna write down one, four. 
each every everybody's portrait is going to be a little different so you have to draw a, a square grid over the top of your picture because you're going to get a certain dimension that dimension is going to transfer over to your board so i have an 8 by 14 as you can see i've already written the chart right here look it says 8 by 14 it also has a 1 a 2 and a 3 right to the side what that's for is to multiply so if i multiplied 8 times 1 you get 8 you multiply 14 by 1 you get 14 right the next one down is doubling each number. That's why there's a two there. So eight times two, you get 16. Can you guys see that? And then 14 times two, you get a 28. And last but not least, we have a three here, right? We're gonna multiply eight times three, that's 24. 14 times three, that's 42. Um, if you look at my board, my board is a 16 by 22. That's really close to these dimensions right here. Um, and so basically what that means is that <clears throat> if I got rid of a couple rows here, that would make it 12 across instead of 14 across, right? So if I do that, then because it's down to 12 across, you double, the, oh, wait, hold on. Um, Correction, this board is 24 inches. So if 12 times two is 24, that means each one of my squares can be two inches and I have myself a grid. Top to bottom and left to right as you have on your photograph that you printed out. So I need virtually seven squares all the way from top to bottom. And I need there, I think I've counted down to 11 squares left to right. I can't have more. I can have less. The reason why I can have less is I can always get rid of another column. Let's say this one right here, or even two. I can even get rid of three or four. Depends on how much backspace I want. And right now, I want that much backspace. And there you go. All right, next step is to measure downwards. And how big do my squares need to be? Not one inch. If that's what you were thinking. Not half an inch. Nope, they need to be, wow. Sorry, my bad. They need to be two inches. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. 14, 16, 18, 20, 22 right there. Wow. Just gotta make sure that you start from a straight edge. I'm picking down here because I'm not sure if that is lined up with this, but I know that's a perfect line. I'm going to go like this and mark the two, four, six, eight, and so on and so forth. Multiples of two. Just like that. And now I connect them. Actually, there's nothing to draw out here, so I'm not even going to connect those. But I do want to connect everything from, let's say, right here, I think. Make sure my lines line up There's one and I always stop and wonder hey do my squares look like squares or do they look like rectangles if they look like rectangles stop look at what you're doing wrong adjust some things Erase if you have to, and then try again. Don't give up, just try again. Not that I have to worry about you guys giving up.
We're getting there. And then one last little bit. I know it doesn't look like it matters much, but it's important to drop those in. So what I should have is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That gives me from the back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, I need one more. After that, I drew those dots. Now why not? Let's just finish. I don't want to confuse you guys. Let's just draw all of them. We have ourselves a grid. I know I drew it lightly, that's on purpose, but you should be able to see some perfect squares. It's time to draw. and the size. So I'm marking 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9 to match my picture. I'm also going to label the side A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I'm going to do that to this one too. A, B, C. Can you guys see that? I'm marking the sides A, B, C all the way down. Now I can draw, starting at nine, Oops. eight, a lot of people is that they try to draw what they think they know about noses, what they think they know about eyes. So oftentimes noses will end up like this or worse, like this. Okay, you, you don't want to draw those things. For eyes, you don't want to draw this, all right? No more drawing this kind of eye. All right, what we have to do is focus on all the little shapes, all the black shapes, all the white shapes. Just draw them the way you see them in the square. Don't worry about what you think you know about faces. We know you're face drawing experts, but right now you're grid drawing experts, okay? That's what I want to see, and that's what you're going to be graded on, is your accuracy of where everything is placed. Um, if you're having trouble drawing and seeing what you, what you have in these squares, what you want to do is take a ruler and break these squares into even smaller squares. And all you have to do is measure the halfway for that. Like so. And then measure another halfway this way. And now what you have, maybe it's a little difficult to see, but it's a cross section. A cross section. So if you have four smaller squares in that space, then what you do is go to that square on your giant grid and break that into four squares and now you have less to stress about now you can focus on what's going on in each one of those little squares it's just one of those tricks that I use when I get stuck and if you guys remember how to mix that it's a combination of white um, burnt sienna and yellow so I would recommend redrawing your grid over the top
I don't want it to be again. Uh, I just finished drawing Chichimera, large scale. Now it's time to start painting. Take a clean paint tray, and I suggest you do small bits at a time. You don't want to overdo it <clears throat> for too much paint all at once. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. That's probably all I need. Come on in. A little bit of black, and a clean paintbrush. Just I don't. Now what you do is you slowly mix in some of those colors. Put in a little bit of black. And throw in a little bit of white. So I'm mixing in white now. And all you want is to match it. You want to match that hope poster or a couple of the other old bay pieces. Something like this. <clears throat> now we paint. Um, just so you know, you have to think about the different values that you'll be using. This is my lightest value, it's the cream color. Uh, my middle tone is the reddish color, actually, bluish color. And my darkest tone is the red. Think about those things before you start painting, otherwise, they won't look right. Um, I'm also going to incorporate black. Black's going to be my darkest, darkest value. So, in order, cream, blue, red, and black. It might not work if you try any other combination. Things might look a little funny. If things look funny, check your combination of colors and your value scale. That means in order, things in order from darkest to lightest. begin by painting the next darkest thing which is my blue stuff.
creativity to get this done right. 